The Battle of Vaslui was fought on January 10, 1475, between Stephen III of Moldavia and the Ottoman governor of Rumelia, Hadim Suleiman Pasha. The battle took place at Padula Nault, near the town of Vaslui, in Moldavia. The Ottoman troops numbered up to 120,000, facing about 40,000 Moldavian troops, plus smaller numbers of Allied and mercenary troops. Stephen inflicted a decisive defeat on the Ottomans, described as the greatest ever secured by the cross against Islam, with casualties, according to Venetian and Polish records, reaching beyond 40,000 on the Ottoman side. Mara Brankovic, the former younger wife of Murad II, told a Venetian envoy that the invasion had been worst ever defeat for the Ottomans. Stephen was later awarded the title Atleta Christi by Pope Sixtus IV, who referred to him as Verus Christiani Fide Atleta. According to the Polish chronicler Jan de Lugos, Stephen did not celebrate his victory. Instead, he fasted for 40 days on bread and water and forbade anyone to attribute the victory to him, insisting that credit be given only to the Lord. Background the conflict between Stephen and Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II worsened when both laid their claims to the historical region of Bessarabia, now known under the name of Bujak. The region had belonged to Wallachia, but later succumbed to Moldavian influence under Petru I of Moldavia and was possibly annexed to Moldavia in the late 14th century by Roman I of Moldavia, under Alexandru Selbun. It had become an integral part of Moldavia and was successfully defended in 1420 against the first Ottoman attempt to capture Castle Chilia. The ports of Chilia and Ackerman were essential for Moldavian commerce. The old trade route from Kaffa, Ackerman, and Chilia passed through Suceava in Moldavia and LWOW in Poland. Both Poland and Hungary had previously made attempts to control the region, but had failed, and for the Ottomans, the control of these two ports and of Kaffa was as much an economic as a political necessity, as it would also give them a better grip on Moldavia, and serve as a valuable strategic point from which naval attacks could be launched against the Commonwealth of Poland-Lithuania. This is confirmed by a German chronicle which explains that Mehmet wanted to turn Moldavia into some kind of fortress, and from there, to launch attacks against Poland and Hungary. The Ottomans also feared the strategic position of Moldavia, from whence it would only take 15 to 20 days to reach Constantinople. In 1448, Petru II of Moldavia awarded Chilia to John Hunyadi, the governor of Transylvania, and in effect, it gave Hungary control of the strategic area on the Danube, with access to the Black Sea. With the assassination of Bogdan II of Moldavia in 1451 by his brother Petru Arin, the country fell into civil war. As two pretenders fought for the throne, Arin and Alexandral, Bogdan's son, Stephen, fled Moldavia together with his cousin, Vlad Dracula, who had sought protection at the Moldavian court to Transylvania, at the court of Hunyadi. Even though Hungary had made peace with the Turks in 1451, Hunyadi wanted to transform Wallachia and Moldavia into a barrier that would protect the kingdom from Ottoman expansion. In the fall of 1453, after the Ottoman capture of Constantinople, Moldavia received an ultimatum to start paying tribute to the port. Two years later, on October 5, 1455, Aaron sent the first Moldavian tribute to the port, a payment of 2,000 ducats, with both Wallachia and Moldavia conducting a pro-Ottoman policy, the plan to install Vlad Epes as Prince of Wallachia began to take shape, sometime between April to July 1456, with the support of a few Hungarian troops and Wallachian boyars, Prince Vladislav II was dethroned and slain. As Vlad Epes took possession of the Wallachian throne, and as such, Chilia became a shared Wallachian-Hungarian possession. In April 1457, Vlad Epes supported Stephen with 6,000 horsemen, which the latter used to invade Moldavia and occupy the Moldavian throne, ending the civil war as Aaron fled to Poland. 
The new prince continued sending the tribute that his uncle and Mehmed had agreed upon, and in such way, avoided any premature confrontation with his enemy. His first priority was to strengthen the country and to retrieve its lost territory. Because Aaron resided in Poland, Stephen made a few incursions in southern Poland. The hostilities ended on April 4, 1459, when in a new treaty between the two countries, Moldavia accepted vassalage and Poland returned Hotten back to Moldavia. The latter also assumed the obligation to support Moldavia in retrieving Chilia and Cetatia Alba. It was also in the interest of Poland to have the area belonging to Moldavia, as it would increase their commerce in the region. On March 2, 1462, in a renewed treaty between the two countries, it was agreed that no Moldavian territory should remain under foreign rulership, and if such territory was under foreign rulership, that territory should be regained. Later that year, it is believed that Stephen asked Vlad to return Chilia back to Moldavia, a demand which was most likely refused. On June 22, when Vlad was fighting Mehmed, Stephen allied himself with the Sultan and with some Turkish assistance, he launched an attack on Chilia, the fortress, defended by tall stone walls and twelve cannons was in the middle of the 15th century the strongest fortification located in the Danube area. The Wallachians rushed to the scene with 7,000 men, and together with the Hungarian garrison battled the Moldavians and the Turks for eight days. They managed to defend the town, while wounding Stephen in his foot with a shrapnel. In 1465, while Vlad was imprisoned in Hungary, Stephen again advanced towards Chilia with a large force and siege weapons, but instead of besieging the fortress, he showed the garrison, who favoured the Polish king, a letter in which the king required them to surrender the fortress. This they did, and Stephen entered the fortress where he found its two captains, rather tipsy, for they have been to a wedding. Mehmed was furious about the news and claimed Chilia for being a part of Wallachia, which now was a vassal to the port, and demanded Stephen to give it over to him. The latter refused, however, and recruited an army, forcing Mehmed, who was not yet ready to wage war, to accept the situation, if only for the time being. The Moldavian prince, realizing that a future war with Mehmed could not be avoided, tried to gain time by increasing his tribute to the port by 50%, and also sent an envoy to Constantinople with gifts for the sultan. In 1467, Matthias Corvinus of Hungary launched an expedition against Moldavia in order to punish Stephen for annexing the region. The invasion ended in a disaster for the Hungarians as they suffered a bitter defeat of the Battle of Bayer, where Corvinus was thrice wounded by arrows and had to be carried from the battlefield on a stretcher to avoid him falling into the hands of the enemy in order to secure his southern frontier from Ottoman threats. Stephen wanted to liberate Wallachia, where the hostile Radu the Handsome, the half-brother of Vladi Pease, ruled from Ottoman dominion. In 1470, he invaded the country and burned down the town of Brela, and in 1471, Stephen and Radu confronted each other in Moldavia, where the latter was defeated. Meanwhile, Genoa, which possessed several colonies in the Crimea, began to worry about Stephen's growing influence in the region, and ordered her colonies to do whatever was needed to revenge past mischief from, which allegedly, the Genovesa had suffered. The colonies in turn pursued the Tatars to attack Moldavia. Later that year, the Tatars invaded the country from the north, causing great damage to the land and enslaving many. Stephen replied by invading Tatar territory with Polish assistance. In 1472, Uzun Hasan of Akkoyunlu invaded the Ottoman Empire from the east, causing a great crisis to the empire. He was defeated the following year, but this unexpected event, as it is explained in a contemporary source, encouraged Venice and Hungary to renew their war on the Ottomans, and Moldavia to free herself from any Ottoman influence.
In 1473, Stephen stopped paying the annual tribute to the port and as a reaction to this, an Italian letter, dated from 1473 to Bartolomeo Scala, Secretary of the Republic of Florence, reveals that Mehmed had left Constantinople on April 13 and was planning to invade Moldavia from land and sea. Stephen still hoped to make peace with Radu and asked the Polish king to work as mediator. The peace attempts failed and the conflict intensified with three leaders challenging each other for the Wallachian throne. Radu, who was supported by Mehmed, the seemingly loyal Basar Iota, who at first was supported by Stephen, and Basar Epilis Seltana, who would gain the support of Stephen after Lyota's betrayal. A series of absurd clashes followed, starting with another confrontation between Stephen and Radu on November 18-20, at Ramniku Sarat where the latter suffered his second defeat of the hands of the Moldavian warlike prince. A few days later, on November 28, the Ottomans intervened with an army consisting of 12,000 Ottomans and 6,000 Wallachians. But they incurred heavy losses and fled across the Danube. After capturing the castle of Bucharest, Stephen put Lyota on the throne. But on December 31, a new Ottoman army of 17,000 set camp around River Barlade, laying waste to the countryside, and intimidating the new prince into abandoning his Wallachian throne and fleeing to Moldavia. In the spring of 1474, Lyota took the Wallachian throne for the second time, and in June, he made the decision to betray his protege by submitting to Mehmet. Stephen then invested his support into a new candidate, named Epilus, but his reign was even shorter, as it only lasted a few weeks after being defeated by Lyota in battle on October 5. Two weeks later, Stephen returned to Wallachia and forced Lyota to flee. Mehmed, tired of what transpired in Wallachia, gave Stephen an ultimatum to forfeit Chilia to the port to abolish his aggressive policy in Wallachia and to come to Constantinople with his delayed homage. The prince refused and in November 1474, he wrote to the Pope to warn him of further Ottoman expansion and to ask him for support. Preparations for war Ottomans Mehmed ordered his general, Suleiman Pasha, to end the siege of Venetian-controlled Shkoda, to assemble his troops in Sofia, and from there to advance with additional troops towards Moldavia. For these already exhausted Ottoman troops, who had besieged the city from May 17 to August 15, the transit from Shkoda to Moldavia was a month's journey through bad weather and difficult terrain. According to De Lugos, Suleiman was also ordered that after inflicting defeat on Stephen, he was to advance towards Poland, set camp for the winter, then invade Hungary in spring, and unite his forces with the army of the Sultan. The Ottoman army consisted of janissaries and heavy infantry, which were supported by the heavy cavalry Sipais and by the light cavalry, who would scout ahead. There were also Tatar cavalry and other troops from vassal states. 20,000 Bulgarian peasants were also included in the army. Their main tasks were to clear the way for the rest of the army by building bridges over waters and removing snow from the roads and to drive supply wagons. In total, the Ottoman cavalry numbered 30,000. In September 1474, the Ottoman army gathered in Sofia, and from there, Suleiman marched towards Moldavia by crossing the frozen Danube on foot. His first stop was Wallachia, which he entered via Vadin and Nikopolish. His army rested in Wallachia for two weeks, and was later met by a Wallachian contingent of 17,000 under Basar Blyota, who had changed size to join the Ottomans. Moldavian Stephen was hoping to gain support from the West, and more specifically from the Pope. However, the help that he received was modest in numbers. The Hungarian Kingdom sent 1,800 Hungarians, while Poland sent 2,000 horsemen. Stephen recruited 5,000 Sekli soldiers. 
The Moldavian army consisted of 20 cannon, light cavalry, elite, heavy cavalry, named Vite G, Kurtina, and Boyers, and professional foot soldiers. The army reached a strength of up to 40,000, of whom 10,000 to 15,000 comprised the standing army. The remainder consisted of 30,000 peasants armed with maces, bows, and other homemade weapons. They were recruited into Osti Mare, into which all able-bodied freemen over the age of 14 were conscripted. Battle. The invading army entered Moldavia in December 1474. In order to fatigue the Ottomans, Stephen had instituted a policy of scorched earth and poisoned waters. Troops who specialized in setting ambushes harassed the advancing Ottomans. The population and livestock were evacuated to the north of the country into the mountains. Ottoman scouts reported to Suleiman that there were untouched villages near Vaslui, and the Ottomans headed for that region. The winter made it difficult to set camp, which forced the Ottomans to move quickly and head for the Moldavian capital, Suceva. In order to reach Vaslui, where the Moldavian army had its main camp, they needed to cross Podul and Alt over the Barlade River. The bridge was made of wood and not suitable for heavy transportation of troops. Stephen chose that area for the battle, the same location where his father, Bogdan II, had defeated the Poles in 1450, and where he, at an age of 17, had fought side by side with Vlad the Impaler. The area was ideal for the defenders. The valley was a semi-oval surrounded on all sides by hills covered by forest. Inside the valley, the terrain was marshy, which restricted troop movement. Suleiman had full confidence in his troops and made few efforts to scout the area. On January 10, on a dark and misty Tuesday morning, the battle began. The weather was frigid, and a dense fog limited vision. The Ottoman troops were exhausted, and the torrent made them look like plucked chickens. Stephen fortified the bridge. While setting and aiming his cannons at the structure, peasants and archers were hidden in the forest, together with their prince and his boyar cavalry. The Moldavians made the first move by sending musicians to the middle of the valley. The sound of drums and bugles made Suleiman think that the entire Moldavian army awaited him there. Instead, the center of the valley held the Sekli forces and the Moldavian professional army which were ordered to make a slow retreat when they encountered the enemy. Suleiman ordered his troops to advance and, when they made enough progress, the Moldavian artillery started to fire, followed by archers and handgunners firing from three different directions. The archers could not see the enemy for the fog and, instead, had to follow the noise of their footsteps. The Moldavian light cavalry then helped to lure the Ottoman troops into the valley by making hit-and-run attacks. Ottoman cavalry tried to cross the wooden bridge, causing it to collapse. Those Ottoman soldiers who had managed to survive the attacks from the artillery and the archers, and who did not get caught in the marshes, had to confront the Moldavian army, together with the Sekli soldiers further up the valley. The 5,000 Sekli soldiers were successful in repelling the 7,000 Ottoman infantrymen. Thereafter, they made a slow retreat, as instructed by Stephen, but were later routed by the Ottoman Saipahi, while the remaining Ottoman infantry attacked the Moldavian flanks. Suleiman tried to reinforce his offensive, not knowing what had happened in the valley, but then Stephen, with the full support of his boyars, ordered a major attack. All his troops, together with peasants and heavy cavalry, attacked from all sides. Simultaneously, Moldavian buglers concealed behind Ottoman lines started to sound their bugles, and in great confusion some Ottoman units changed direction to face the sound. When the Moldavian army hit, Suleiman lost control of his army. He desperately tried to regain control, but was later forced to signal a retreat.
The battle lasted for four days, with the last three days seeing the fleeing Ottoman army being pursued by the Moldavian light cavalry and the 2,000-strong Polish cavalry until they reached the town of Ablusita, in Dobroja. The Wallachians fled the field without joining battle and Lyota now turned his sword against the Turks who had hoped for a safe passage in Wallachia. On January 20, he exited his castle and confronted some of the Turks that were lurking on his land. Thereafter, he took one of their flags and sent it to a Hungarian friend as proof of his bravery. The Ottoman casualties were counted as 45,000, including four Pashas killed and a hundred standards taken. Jan de Lugos writes that, all but the most eminent of the Turkish prisoners are impaled, and their corpses burned. Only one was spared, the only son of the Ottoman general Isaac Bey, of the Ghazi Evrenis family, whose father had fought with Misha the Old. Another Polish chronicler reported that on the spot of the battle rested huge piles of bones upon each other, next to three immured crosses.